we've just stopped off at Brian's place. It's a non-turbo eight valve. This is literally like a brand new car. Check out how clean the engine bay is. Loving the front lip on it. Actually running mini lights. Gear stick kind of angles back. The chrome and stuff is still really, really good. This is the area that normally rusts in these. Inside of the bonnets were never painted. Banded wheels, limited edition. One of 250. Really cool blue interior. To Brian's knowledge, there's only three left. Old school pattern on the seats. We're going climbing. Loving the alloy wheel collection. So Brian's just laid out these rocker covers. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and as you'll know if you've been watching my videos lately, I'm over in Ireland and Northern Ireland making videos and we've just stopped off a guy called Brian's place who has very kindly let me show you all his collection of really low mileage Vauxhalls and Opals. Alright, so we'll start over here with what is the most modern car in this little collection. It's a Vauxhall Calibra. You never see these about anymore. This one, if I remember rightly, has got about 30 odd thousand miles on it. It's a non-turbo eight valve. But yeah, as far as I know, it's completely original. We'll have a look inside. Brian likes to keep all the seats covered and stuff because his cars are absolutely mint. But yeah, this is literally like a brand new car. Look at that, not a mark on the seats. Absolutely pristine. As I say, you never see these about anymore. They all got crashed or, you know, ended up in the scrap yards. I know that the turbo ones of these all got ripped apart so that the Corsa boys could use the engines. But yeah, as I say, this one is a eight valve non-turbo. Yeah, everything literally looks brand new. Obviously the exhaust manifold is a little bit surface rusty, but that's to be expected because it has covered 30,000 miles, but everything else that I can see is absolutely pristine. Really cool to see. Now parked next to the Calibra is one of three Asconas that are in here. There's a couple more behind. Love the color of this one. Now, again, it is really, really mint. Let's check out how clean the engine bay is. I think I remember Brian saying this hasn't been restored, it is just how it is. Loving the front lip on it. This is a sport model, but yeah, really, really nice. We'll try and sneak through and give you a peek of the interior. Not much space, but check out how mint this thing is. Really, really pristine condition. Yeah, very, very low mileage. I can't remember the exact mileage, but Brian likes to keep the cars original. There are a couple that have had their wheels changed and stuff, but yeah, he likes to keep them low mileage and original. See the Opal Ascona lettering on the back, and that might mean something to some of you guys. Steinmetz, Opal tuning, yeah, mint. And it's worth noting as well that even though Brian likes to keep his cars clean and low mileage, he does take them all out. You know, they all do get driven which I think is a sensible thing to do. You know, when you leave these cars literally just never driven, it's not right, they should be enjoyed, but it's also not good for them to leave them undriven. So yeah, all these cars do get driven. Anyway, I think we'll have a look at the other two Asconas now. Now these two are two doors, which apparently are rarer. This one's also got a bit of a front lip on it. It's actually running mini lights. 
there are a couple of cars in here that have got different wheels. Brian was telling me that the engine bay on this one has been restored, but if I remember rightly, this car has only done about 16,000 miles. But yeah, he did redo the engine bay. Carefully open the driver's door and take a look inside. It is a bit dark in here, but just take my word for it that it's absolutely mint. Really old school pattern on the seats. Chrome trim on the doors and around the dash. Really cool. See the gear stick. I don't know if you can see it with the light, but the gear stick kind of angles back. You know, the gearbox is obviously set quite forward, which I'm guessing is just an Opel Ascona thing, but yeah. All the chrome and stuff is still really, really good. Yeah, there's not much space to get around the back, but yeah. Really like the look of that. And next to it, we've got another two-door Ascona. This one's a left-hand drive. I think Brian was saying it came from France. And yeah, again, really low mileage, unrestored. I think those wheels might be not the originals, but it certainly looks good on them. Yeah, absolutely mint. Brian was telling me that this is the area that normally rusts in these cars, and you can see a few tiny scabs, but it really is hardly anything. And yeah, really well presented. Mint engine bay. One thing that's really interesting about these cars is the inside of the bonnets and boots were never painted. So yeah, this is just primer. So it looks a bit strange, obviously not being the same color, but that is how they were originally. And yeah, there is literally hardly any surface rust on it, even though this was never painted blue like the rest of the car. Yeah, they definitely look cooler in two door, much like the Escorts. And the two doors are more expensive much like the Escorts. Over here, we've got a Mark I Cavalier in silver. It's actually sitting on banded wheels, and they're not the original wheels that have been banded. But yeah, really cool with the hubcaps in the middle. Yeah, again, another absolutely mint car. Stunning example, very low mileage. Brian was telling me that this car is actually a bit of a limited edition, much like the Manta over there that is the same color as this Cavalier. But yeah, I actually really like these Mark 1 Cavaliers. These are, of course, real drive, unlike the later Cavaliers. But yeah, absolutely mint. Let's have a peek inside. Much like the other cars, it's absolutely pristine. We've got voxel covers on the seats just to stop the seats wearing out. Check out that really cool pattern on the seats. Yeah, same as the Asconas, the gear stick kind of angles backwards. So I'm guessing the gearbox is set quite forward on these, but really, really lovely looking. Slightly modified Mark I Cavalier. So now I'll just sneak past and have a quick look at the silver Manta that I just mentioned. Brian's just giving me a light so we can actually see this Manta better. He was telling me that this is one of 250. It's called a Manta Silver 2, if I remember rightly. But yeah, absolutely stunning example. Really, really low mileage. And yeah, as I say, they only built 250 of these, painted in silver. There's not really space to open the door without risking scratching anything, but it's got a really cool blue interior. Even the headlining's blue. Got some wood going on on the dash and stuff. Absolutely mint inside. There is really not a lot of space here, but I'll just show you it as best as I can. Brushing up against some stuff that's hanging on the wall. I don't want to risk damaging anything. But yeah, there it is. Some of you guys may be familiar with these. A Manta Silver 2. Now, part next to that is a Cadet RS, if I remember rightly. There's only 410 of these made. And to Brian's knowledge, there's only three left. And this is one of them. Isn't quite as pristine as the rest of Brian's fleet, but it still is a really, really solid example. Not really much in the way of rust. I'm guessing that Brian is gonna give this a light restoration to make it more fitting for his collection, but yeah, really cool looking car. The window's open, so we can have a look at the interior of this one. Really cool old school pattern on the seats. Mint door cards. But yeah, another rare beast. Brian's collection. Now Brian does have more Opals and Vauxhalls, but these are the ones that he's allowed me to film, which I really appreciate. All laid out in a really cool shed or garage, all insulated, 
all these cars did have covers on them when we came in. You know, these cars really are looked after, although I'm glad they are driven. It's got a mezzanine at either end. Up here, got loads of wheels and tires and stuff. But yeah, really, really tidy little workshop. All the uh, bits and bobs on the shelf. There is parts hanging from the, the roof and stuff. I'm guessing up there is a load of other parts. Got a really cool banner thing up here of what I think is a manta. But yeah, I'd love a place like this, but it probably wouldn't be as tidy <laughs> if it was mine. <laughs> we're going climbing up the mezzanine. All right, so we're up in Brian's parts department. Check out all the wheels. It's got loads and loads of the ATS classics. So if you're wondering why you can't find any, it's because Brian's got them all. These are really interesting. Set of Rostyles that have been banded. Deep dish Rostyles, really cool, but yeah. Loads more wheels and tires in the corner there. And he's actually just laid out these front splitters. Genuine front splitters for the Ascona. This is a front splitter for a Manta. Yeah, various other parts scattered around. Looks like there's a bit of a collection of wheel center caps over here. But yeah, really cool little space and loving the alloy wheel collection. Yeah, Brian's just laid out these rocker covers. He was telling me about them. This is a genuine Ermsha cover. This one here did say 2.4 here, but he had a guy skim it and then weld this piece on so it says Ermsha. That looks really cool. And we've got this other rocker cover here and Brian's gonna be switching this up in some way. That brings us to the end of this tour of part of Brian's collection. I wanna send a massive thanks out to Brian for showing me around and letting me film it for you guys. But yeah, my island trip hasn't finished yet. I'm going home tomorrow. But yeah, if you haven't watched all the other videos from this trip, definitely go back and look at those. But for now, I'm gonna end this video here. If you did think it was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe to keep up to date with all my future uploads and check the links in the description to my social media, my website. I'll also leave a link to my Patreon down there. Massive thanks to everyone who has become a patron. I really, really appreciate your support. I'll also leave my email address in the description for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.